Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS The show that discusses Islamic rulings for your duties and your practices by the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi I'm your host Mohsin Shah and joining me is the great Sheikh Ali Ma'ash Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah So we'll be continuing the discussion inshallah on mutahharat and how to purify certain items of which have become najis um, Sheikhna, how does the sun actually Purify Najasa and I mean can it be used for any t- t- type of common Najasa or specifically only? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin In the last episode I've mentioned uh, two categories of the purification of um, substances such as, such as uh, water and earth and now we move to sun. With regard to your question about how does the sun purifies, and what does it purifies, um, the main things that the sun purifies are the buildings and the windows which are in that buildings, the doors. The sun itself does not purify anything else except these things. And um, with regard to purifying using the sun there are conditions now there are five conditions with regard to purifying using the sun okay uh, let's say you have a wall you have a building especially the sky rise the buildings um where you can't reach if let's say mm-hmm. if there's an ajasa on it um you want to purify it and there, there are no rain for example to purify it by the water running water so five conditions to actually be able to purify that building and that wall on that building. Number one is actually by allowing that wall or that window or that door to be moisted and wet with water. So when the sun would shine on that wall or window would make it dry and render it dry and, and uh, as a result would make it tahir. So the, the first condition there must be some kind of, in the middle, moist or wetness on that surface, on that wall or building. And you have, of course, the sun shining on that building. And of course, that wetness should be enough, uh, what can be transferred you know, to other objects. So not just a, a bit of mo- moist or wetness. You need enough uh, of the um, wetness and, and moist to be able to purify that object. The second condition is to actually removing that um, substance of najasa and impure. So if there is blood on, on the window or on the, or the door or on the um, wall, you must first remove it. You remove that, the actual najasa first and then you make it wet or moist and then you allow the sun to shine on that object. The third condition with regard to purifying using sun on the buildings also um, you have to make sure that there are no nothing blocks the sunshine. Okay. So there so can't be any obstacles or anything exactly. to stop the sunlight from There should touching. be no, no curtains, for example. Oh. The clouds itself, the clouds would also uh, block the sunshine. So you have to make sure that there's nothing that uh, allows the, shun- uh, the, uh, the sunshine not to take place. And uh, having just a thin curtain, very thin curtain would be fine. Okay. Or thin clouds. Uh, you just have to allow sun to actually uh, shine on, on that uh, wall or, or building. So that's a very important thing. So having just a bit of cloud or a bit of uh, 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 like a cloth or clothes or, or um, thin clothes or barriers. thin barriers would be would be fine. Um, there's no problem at all. 
With regard to the fourth um, condition, that um, you have to make sure that it is only the sun in which dries up the, the surface or that object. Okay. Uh, nothing else. So you shouldn't actually um, allow, for example, other things. Let's say you, you, you use a fan, for example, or naturally the wind. Okay. There's a high wind. And, and the wind was the cause of drying that oh. wall or that building. Not the heat. Okay. Um, so you have to make sure that, or let's say the wall is, uh, there's a like a, uh, in a position that the sun cannot reach the wall and the wall dries up due to the high temperature. Mm -hmm. That's another issue. So solely should be um, dried up by the sunlight itself, nothing else. And the fifth condition that um, when the process of, of drying is taking place by the sunshine, you have to make sure that in one go, the whole part of that wall or window or, or building has been dried up. So uh, if let's say the outside of the wall, the surface was dried up, but the inside wasn't dried, then it will not make it tahir, the inside. Mm -hmm. The outside is tahir now, became pure. Yes. But the inside did not become tahir because the sun shine was only um, took its um, portion of drying up the surface, the outside surface. It didn't go, go through inside, for example. Mm -hmm. It was just a, sh a few minutes, let's say, sunshine. So you have to allow it to uh, take its position and, 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 and uh, sh shining till the whole um, building or the whole wall has been dried in and out, outside. Okay. And what about the next uh, category of, of uh, Now the next category, uh, the fourth category of uh, purifiers is the transformation, which is known as istihala. Istihala. Istihala or transformation, when you have an object, which is najis, mm -hmm. let's say you have a a najis wood okay. and you want to make it tahir now let's say the whole wood even the inside became najis okay. how could you reach the inside of the wood the whole let's say the alcohol immersed inside the, uh, the wood okay or the blood and so forth so how could you purify that with that wood without using for example water now istihal is another way where you for example burn that wood okay so when the wood becomes ashes yes now you have some, a, a different and a new substance okay. called ashes. Uh -huh. That ash uh, is tahir now. Okay. Rendered tahir because it's now the subject and the title has been changed from wood mm -hmm. to ashes. There's okay. something else completely. Uh -huh. So transformation of wood to ashes renders it uh, pure. Okay, Sheikh Nas, so the actual transformation of the, uh, of the subject makes it tahir. So the wood turning into ash. What about with food? As in, um, if I've got wheat, uh, it's become najis. I've now crushed the wheat to flour. I've made bread out of the flour. Is that tahir? Uh, maybe milk. If the milk becomes najis and I turn the milk into cheese or into yogurt, is that still considered najis? So basically, we have to make sure that there's a complete and molecular change. Molecular change. From one substance to another. Okay. So milk, cheese, and so forth, they are still in that subject ah, they, of they, the they, dairy. They still have the same, they still have the same ke uh, chemicals and same qualities. Yeah. yeah. So see. we have to make sure they have changed totally to something else completely. Okay, Sheikhna, one, one um, topic that comes to mind is gelatin. That, that does have some sort of molecular and chemical change from its original state to what it has become now. Sometimes they use pork uh, for uh, gelatin purposes. Sometimes beef, and sometimes they use an alternative vegetarian one. What does this actually come under istihar, and does it um, change its state from najis to tahir? The problem with gelatin, um, it's been argued by ulama as well, uh, with this regard, that is it halal or not halal. Some of the ulama they haven't reached the conclusion that the gelatin, let's say the beef, which are, which is not halal, uh, slaughtered. Um, is that halal to eat? Still hasn't been actually transformed from one substance to another chemically. So 
they still refrain at least precautionously. So avoid eating, for example, gelatins which are produced in, in non-Muslim countries, which are from animal fats and so forth. So they try to avoid it. Um, and that's why um, the best option is to use uh, the ones which are from the Islamic countries, Muslim countries, or to use vegeta vegetarian ones. Otherwise, um, the the asal and the 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 the, ba the basis of the gelatin, which was in the West, for example, from haram meat, um, remains najis and haram to consume unless you become sure. Mm -hmm. So it's the vice versa of the rule I gave you in the last episode that kullu okay, shayn laka yeah. uh -huh. Now this is the vice versa. The naj najis remains najis, the haram remains haram unless you become sure that it became tahir and pure. Oh, so you have to go so back, okay. you search to find out if gelatin that is produced in the West and non-Muslim countries, did they actually um, transform, it, transform it to something else? Did it become istihala? And then you can actually consume if you're sure about it. Otherwise it remains haram and najis. Sheikha, what about, um, I know that grape juice, uh, especially when you boil it, does it have some sort of chemical change or anything? Or is there a, a different way of actually purifying uh, grape juice which has been boiled? This is the next category of the purifications, mm -hmm. uh, evaporation of two-thirds of grape juice. Again, if you actually have grapes and you boil them, it is haram to consume that drink. Okay. The grape juice drink, which was boiled, boiled. Mm -hmm. it's not najis, it's not uh, impure, but it's haram to consume. Okay. Um, now, to be able to consume it, you have to allow it to evaporate of two thirds of the juice again. Uh -huh. So you boil it again, and you allow two thirds of that juice so to be ev evaporated. So you have to reduce it to a third. Exactly, and then you can consume it. Okay. Otherwise, it remains haram to consume, but it's not, it's not najis. Can that method work for other things as well, or is it just specifically grape juice? It's specifically for the grape juice because um, uh, others you cannot do anything with it, like the alcohol, for example, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's najis. So um, the narration seems to be that they mention only the grape juice, asir al anabi so it's only mm -hmm. to do with the boiling of the grape juice. So, Sheikhna, what about uh, when we receive blood transfusions? So, we, let's say we've got a patient, he's in uh, desperate need of blood. The blood that's available is from a non-Muslim. Um, what happens there? The blood that he receives, uh, is that najis? Um, or does, you know, uh, is, is it okay for him to actually accept and, and use the blood transfusion? Well, any blood which is um, transferred to somebody else's body, let's say a Muslim body, that becomes part of his body. Okay. But we have to remember that the blood itself is najis. Mm -hmm. so be it from a Muslim or a non-Muslim. The blood of humans in overall, uh, if somebody cuts his finger or his veins and blood comes out and gushes out, that blood is najis, whether it's from, as I've said, Muslim or non-Muslims. But that blood that which is trans transferred from non-Muslim to a Muslim becomes part of that uh, um, body of that person or that patient who actually received the, the blood donor. And it's, it's rendered tahir, and this is tahir for him. As I've said, the, the, uh, the blood itself remains najis. Okay. But um, the thing is that um, it won't make the, 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 rest of the, the blood, body. the blood right. transferred from non-Muslim to a Muslim, becomes part of the part of the, the body, body of, the of that Muslim. That's it. Okay. So, it's so it, it won't make the rest of the body najis. It would actually no, it's, it's all inside. It's all, yes, it's all so inside, unless if he cuts his hands or okay. an injury, and then the blood comes out. Then he has to but that's irrelevant wash. Whether and it was his own blood or transfusion blood, the blood is najis. Full stop. Still, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's There's one issue and case is mentioned here that if wine turns vinegar okay wine that's, turns that's, that's important vinegar. as well okay if wine turns vinegar then it because becomes tahir we do because we do have uh, you can buy from the shops uh, white uh, wine vinegar red wine vinegar correct and this is not to be confused with actual red wine or white wine because 
it's not actually wine, it has no alcohol in it, it's vinegar that probably originates from, from something like we that. We go back to the issue of the subjects. The subjects mm -hmm. now completely changed from wine, the alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. to vinegar. It's something else. Yes. Even the taste changes, everything, mm -hmm. even the effects of drunkenness and mm -hmm. intoxication all changes. So there's like a molecular change in, exactly, in the, in the exactly. substance. Exactly, exactly. Is there anything else, and any other categories remaining on, on mutahirat and purifying things? The other criteria for purification of the najasa is the removal and eradication of the najasa itself. Okay. So let's say if you have a pet, an animal, yes. and um, let's say a cat, not a dog of course because the dog is actually najis, so a cat or any other animals uh, in which let's say they've hunted something and there is najis uh, blood on their let's say, on their cheeks or body, then this najasa, when that animal goes away and comes back again, and the najasa eventually, uh, and by itself, was removed, okay. that process makes it a tahir. Ah. So you don't have to wash your cat or other animals in order mm -hmm. to make a tahir. You just leave it, and it, when it goes by itself, after a while, yes. that process of going by itself, the najasa, renders uh, the body of this animal uh, pure and tahir. Likewise, let's say if you have a, a blood inside your mouth or inside your, your uh, nose, for example, and you actually felt it, you know, you can actually mm -hmm. feel and see the blood. But after a while, that blood disappeared from your ins the inside of the mouth or the mm -hmm. inside of the nose again, that itself will render and makes it itself and by itself tahir. You don't have to actually wash in the inside of the mouth or the, um, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the nose afterwards yes. because the, bl the blood dis disappeared mm -hmm. and that makes it tahir. Awesome. Awesome. Are there any more categories? Um, we slaughter, let's say, a sheep or a cow for the purpose of having halal meat. Yes. The amount of the blood gushing out from mm -hmm. this animal when it's slaughtered of course, that gushing blood is najis. Okay. When that amount of blood um, came out from this animal, the halal mm -hmm. animal, of course, makes that the remaining uh, of, of the blood inside the body of the sheep or the cow, the remaining ones becomes tahir. And you actually wash the neck of the najasa, mm -hmm. the outside najasa of the animal. Now it's, it's, it's Tahir, so you don't have to actually uh, purify yourself from Najasa. Nice. Shaykh, I've got a question um, in regards to um, Najasa itself, and that is, when we purchase property, do I have to go and clean all the, all the, the walls and the carpets and everything because it's Najis? We go back again to the principle, to the, to the basis and to the Asal that everything is tahir. Everything you see is tahir unless you witness and you're certain that it's najis. So even if you buy or rent a property mm -hmm. and you discover that, uh, let's say, uh, part of that property is najis, then you have to, of course, make it uh, uh, tahir and clean up. But as far as you don't, you don't have any idea about the najasa, or did they have a dog or no, for example, and you receive the property as it is clean. Um, yes, it's been used, the cart has been used, for example, the sofa has been used. As long as you don't know, for example, the, the, the previous landlord or the tenant did not uh, inform you about the Najasa. So as long as you're not certain about the Najasa. Exactly. In this mm -hmm. case, everything is tahir, everything is pure, even if the previous tenants were non-Muslims. So, Sheikhna, what about, I mean, a lot of the brothers, they like to go swimming. So we go into a big swimming pool, men's only. There are different types of people of different faiths, different backgrounds in the swimming pool. Is that water considered najis? The water of the swimming pools and such like, um, if they are more than kur, we have a kur, um, the water of kur, um, which has a specific measurements and amounts. If it actually is core or more than the core, then that's tahir and, and pure. So 
with regard to swimming pools, yes, um, they are tahir, they're pure. Even if there are no running water, mm -hmm. so it's just a, a closed lake or a pond or a swimming pool without any running water or source of water coming in and out. Uh, by the way, the most or the, ma the majority of swimming pools, they have actually running water okay. and filtration of the water. Ah, so the, it's this continuous so flow it's of water it's coming in and definitely out Definitely, it's, it's, it's tahir, even if somebody does something inside, nejis, um, uh -huh. uh, inside the water, it remains a pure and tahir. And just to stay away from that nejis part, if, you, if it's visible, so you just refrain from being in that position of, uh, of the najasa, otherwise it's tahir. No oh. Would that also apply to when people go to the laundrettes? So we have public laundrettes where you know you you go and um, you can wash and dry your clothes. It's used by numerous people of different faiths and backgrounds. Are those machines? Will they make our clothes najis or can they? Will they make them tahir? Again, the same rule apl applies with regard to the najasa and impurities and purities. Basically. The washing machines and such like, because we haven't seen, we haven't witnessed the Najasa itself. And we couldn't actually find out if this washing machine is Najis. Then everything is clean and Tahir until you become certain that it's Najis. Mm -hmm. Even the dryers, the driest yeah. conditions are worse than the washing machine. At least in washing machines, we have uh, running water yes. and rinsing and draining water. Uh, but with regard to dryers, it's just drying. Yes. But we ha because we haven't seen actually and witnessed the najasa, uh, in this case, they're all tahir and allowed to be used because we haven't seen and witnessed any kind of najasa. Yes, if you see, if you see the najasa, then you have to avoid it, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it's all tahir, according to the narration and to the rule that everything is tahir unless you're certain about it. So, Sheikh, now we've got another question here in regards to uh, leather from non-Muslim countries, imported leather in manufacturing, especially when it comes from animals that are not eaten. So we're talking about foxes or uh, snake skin, uh, lion, or all sorts of different animals. Their skin is used uh, for leather. Are these rendered najis or tahir? With regard to the animals which were slaughtered and have the gushing blood, and killed in non-Muslim countries by a non-Muslim person. Now the skin becomes najis and meat, so it's like corpse, carcass. In this case, we cannot use it because it's najis. Um, and that's why we have to avoid, for example, if we buy actually bags, especially for the women, bags or shoes made, made of um, leather, which is made in, let's say, China, and it's from animal, we are sure about it, it's from animal, leather, we have to make sure that we avoid uh, touching these um, um, items with the uh, wet hand, for example, otherwise we have to wash it and, and purify it. Or make sure that you don't pray with them. You have the, you know, the little bag and then you pray with that um, little bag which is made of the skin of the um, uh, corpse, for example, a dead meat animal. Um, and to avoid it. So it's najis, of course. It's been hunted and killed by a non-Muslim. So we have to try to avoid using them as much as we can. So, Sheikhna, um, what is the ruling in regards to non-alcoholic beverages? So we have like, you know, like barley water or, you know, these beers that are non-alcoholic or uh, drinks that are, you know, they assimilated like wine but then have no alcohol in it. Are these okay to drink or not? Well, there's no objection to actually use um, the barley drink, which was prescribed by the physicians, you know, the mm -hmm. medical barley. And the ones which have no intoxication yes. or alcohol. It's mm -hmm. just a um, uh, pure, natural barley with water. So without any kind of process of intoxicating uh, that drink. Okay. So now I've got another question here, and it's in regards to food uh, mixing with sewage. So as you know, uh, there's a lot of food that gets left over on, on plates, uh, on our hands, and we go to the sink, we wash our hands, we clean the plates. That food, some of it goes into the drain and it mixes with the sewage water. 
um, and also you know the, the other food that's left over we, you know, we, we pick it up with our hands it sticks to our hands and we, we throw it away what's the ahkam ruling on this? well we have to try avoid throwing away f excess food uh, that we have let's say by giving it to um, the pigeons for example the a other animals we have around and um, if they are clean we can give it to those who are in need of that portion of food to those poor around those who don't for example who sleep on the streets the homeless for example if it's actually a clean food but it's excess and we don't want it um, otherwise um, the food which sticks on our hands and fingers we can actually wash it it doesn't matter because at the end of the day it will be destroyed mm -hmm. when it goes uh, through the drains so uh, there's no objection about it otherwise uh, the best thing is always to learn and uh, use the etiquette of eating and drinking as the Islam mentioned how to eat how to drink and it, it will actually tell you how to actually uh, use uh, those etiquettes in our daily life and to avoid israf and tabdir as mentioned in the Holy Quran and the narrations thank you very much Thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Ahkam SOS. If you have any questions that you would like to direct to the Sheikh, please contact us with the details provided and we'll do our best to answer all your questions. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.